So this is a continuation of my better product rule video. And so here we're gonna look at the quotient rule. So when I was a student, I always had trouble remembering the quotient rule. I knew that there was an F prime times G and an F times G prime in the numerator, but I always forget, forgot which order they needed to be subtracted. Was it F prime times G minus F times G prime, or was it the opposite? I could always remember the G squared in the denominator, but it was hard to remember that numerator, the order of the numerator. And so obviously we can't change the quotient rule, but maybe a little game that we can play is look for pairs of functions f and g so that this really, really nice quotient rule works. In other words, the derivative of f divided by g is the same thing as the derivative of f divided by the derivative of g. So obviously we don't wanna leave both of these functions free, so what we'll do is we'll fix one of the functions and use that to define a differential equation for the other function. So let's go ahead and maybe fix the function g of x. It's still an arbitrary function, but we're fixing that, and now that creates a differential equation for f that would make this nice quotient rule satisfied. So in other words, we have f prime over g prime equals f over g quantity prime, so that's the differential equation we want to solve, but we know that the actual quotient rule exists, and we can apply that to this right-hand side. That'll give us f prime times g minus f times g prime all over g squared. Great. So now let's see, maybe we can um, multiply both sides of this equation by g prime and g squared to clear the denominators. So that's gonna give us g squared times f prime equals f prime times g prime times g, so that's this first term after multiplying, minus f times g prime quantity squared. Great, but now this is turning into a separable differential equation for f. So let's see how we can see that. Let's maybe uh, move this over. So that's gonna give us uh, g squared times f prime minus f prime times g prime times g equals negative f times the quantity g prime squared. Good, but now maybe we can like change the sign on either side so we don't have this hanging minus sign here. And then while we do that, we'll factor an f prime out of this left-hand side. So that'll leave us with f prime, and then we have g prime times g minus g squared. So notice I reversed the order there because we're getting rid of a minus sign. Equals f, and then g prime quantity squared. Great, but now what we can do is maybe like move all the g's of, to one side of the equation and all the f's to the other side of the equation. So let's see what we get if we do that. So I'll go ahead and bring that up here. That'll give us f prime over f equals, so we'll have g prime squared over this guy. So let's see what that is. So g prime squared over g prime times g minus g squared. Good. But now we can take the antiderivative of both sides with respect to x. Remember, both of those functions depend on some dependent, independent variable. We'll call that variable x. And so that'll give us the antiderivative of f prime. Now I'll maybe put the functional dependence back in here of x over f of x dx. I won't do that for the right-hand side because it's a little uh, noisier, but we still have this antiderivative of g prime quantity squared over g prime times g minus g squared dx. Great. But now by a simple u substitution, we can see that this left-hand side is actually fairly easy to take the integral of. If we let u equal f of x, that makes d du equal f prime of x dx. So notice this term in the denominator is u, and then here I have my du earmuffs take up the entire numerator, which means this is gonna an have an antiderivative of the natural log of f of x. So here we have ln f of x equals, now this thing, which we can't really write down anything about it because it's complicated and it's gonna depend on whatever the function g is. So we have g prime quantity squared, g prime times g minus g quantity squared dx plus a constant. 
good. Now we can solve for f of x by exponentiating both sides, keeping in fact, keeping in mind that that's gonna turn the addition of the constant to a multiplication by a constant. So here we'll get that f of x can be written in terms of g of x in the following way. So f of x is equal to c, and then I'll use exp to mean that's in the exponent of the antiderivative g prime squared g prime g minus g squared dx. So where maybe this c and this c are different, this is like a lowercase c and this is like an uppercase c, and they're related by uppercase c is e to the lowercase c. And that's what I mean by this x, it's e to the that antiderivative. Great, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put that over here and then we'll work out some examples to find explicit pairs of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and transport this formula over here. So on the last board we had a dream to simplify the quotient rule and we did that by fixing some arbitrary function g and noticing that our dream quotient rule holds if f satisfies this condition. In other words, it's a constant times e to the antiderivative of this thing involving g prime and g. So we've got g prime squared in the numerator, g prime times g minus g squared in the denominator, and we're integrating with respect to x. So let's go ahead and work out a specific example for some nice g. So let's go ahead and set g of x equal to a power function. So let's just say it's x to the r. Good. Now let's see what this object right here is. So now we're gonna need g prime of x quantity squared over g prime of x times g of x minus g of x squared. Great. And then of course we need to take the antiderivative of that and exponentiate it in order to get f. But that's kind of a lot to work with, so let's just focus on this first. So notice, notice that given that g of x is x to the r, g prime of x is equal to r times x to the r minus one. Now if you square that, we'll have r squared times x to the two r minus two, like using exponent rules. Now we've got g prime times g, so that'll be r times x to the two r minus one, again, using exponent rules, and then we'll have minus x to the two r. Great. Now what I wanna do is notice that I can pull out like a common term from the numerator and the denominator. In fact, that common term is equal to x to the two r minus two. So what I'll do is I'll take the numerator and the denominator and I'll divide by x to the two r minus two. In other words, multiply by one over that in the numerator and the denominator. So let's see what that gives us. That's gonna leave us with r squared in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we'll have r times x, that'd be this term. And then we'll also have minus x squared. Great, but again, we wanna take the antiderivative of that and exponentiate it. But this kind of screams out that we should be doing partial fraction decomposition because notice this is equal to r um, over x times r minus x which means hopefully we can decompose it as a over x plus b over r minus x. And that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So I wanna take this equation and multiply both sides by x times r minus x to clear the fractions. And that'll give us r on the left-hand side. And I noticed that that should have been r squared. So that's gonna leave us with r squared on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we'll have a times r minus x. Good, and then we'll have plus b times x. Now we can extract the coefficient of x from both sides of this equation and the constant term from both sides of this equation to create a system of equations for a and b. So the coefficient on the right-hand side of x is b minus a. On the left-hand side, there's no x, so that's equal to zero. And then the coefficient of the constant on the right hand side is, let's see, a times r, and then on the left hand side it's r squared. So what that tells us is that a equals r and that b also equals r. Good. 
But now we can um, put this together. So notice we have f of x is going to be equal to e to the antiderivative of this function right here with this a and b plugged in. So we have a r over x plus r over r minus x dx. So I've taken my constant here to be one, but that's okay, because we're just looking for an example. All right, great. So now let's see, that's gonna give us the exponential of r times ln of x plus minus r times the ln of r minus x. Again, kind of keeping in mind the chain rule when we take the antiderivative of that r over r minus x. Okay, great, but now notice that we can kind of mash all of this together and have the exponential and the logarithm cancel by writing this as x over r minus x to the quantity r. So let's just talk our way through that. So we did that by bringing this r into the natural log here, bringing this r into the natural log here, and then using that minus sign to combine the natural logs into one quotient, and then the exponential and the logarithm cancel. So it looks like if g is this nice power function x to the r, f needs to be this quotient down here, x over r minus x, and that's all raised to the r power. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll actually check that this worked. So on the last board we determined that a pair of functions that satisfied our dream quotient rule had f of x as x over r minus x to the quantity r and then g of x equals x to the r. Now let's just go ahead and check that that actually works. And we'll do that by calculating the left hand side and the right hand side of this dream quotient rule. So notice that left hand side is what we get if we divide f and g and then take the derivative. So let's notice if we take the quotient of f and g, we'll get r minus x to the minus r, and then we still need to take the derivative of that. That's just the quotient. Notice the x to the r and the numerator of f of x will cancel with the x to the r, which is g of x. So now we can use the chain rule on this. So notice that's gonna give us minus r um, times r minus x to the minus r minus one, but then we also have to multiply by a minus one because of the chain rule, we gotta take the derivative of minus x, so we can use that to cancel this other minus r which came from this kind of general power rule. Okay, so that's what we get for this left-hand side. Now let's see what we get for the right-hand side. So the right-hand side of this should be f prime over g prime. So let's see if we can do that. So notice g prime is just r times x to the r minus one. Good. Now to calculate f prime, we need to use the chain rule and the actual quotient rule, but that kind of like defeats the whole purpose, but this is just a game after all. So notice just taking the derivative of f prime, we'll have r times x over r minus x uh, to the r minus one, and now we need to multiply that by the derivative of x over r minus x. So let's see what that is. So the derivative of x over r minus x, that'll be r minus x minus, so now we need to take the derivative of r minus x times x. The derivative of r minus x is minus one, so that's gonna turn this minus into a plus, so we have plus x, and that's all over r minus x squared. Great. So now let's see what we get um, when all is said and done. So that's going to leave us with r x to the r minus 1 over r minus x to the r minus 1. That's like this term right here. But then notice here we're going to have r minus x plus x. So that's going to give us another r which will turn into r squared and then we have an r minus x squared, so that's actually gonna turn into an r minus x uh, to the r plus one when multiplying this other guy right here. Great, and then finally in the denominator of the whole thing, we have r times r times x to the r minus one. Okay, so let's see what cancels. So this x to the r minus one cancels with this x to the r minus one. This r scrubs this thing down to an exponent of one, and then we're left with r over r minus x 
to the r plus one, but notice that that is exactly equal to r times r minus x to the minus r minus one. So this example does work. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we'll construct one more example. So for our next example, we'll try to construct one of these dream pairs built out off of g of x equals e to the ax. So notice by the chain rule that tells us that g prime of x equals a times e to the ax. But remember, we still need to take the antiderivative of this big thing depending on g and exponentiate it. So let's find this big thing depending on g. In other words, we need to find g prime of x quantity squared over g prime of x times g of x minus uh, g of x squared. Good. So let's see what we get for that. So g prime squared will be a squared e to the 2ax. Good. And now g prime times g will be a times e to the 2ax minus g squared. So that's going to be minus e to the 2ax. So maybe this isn't super surprising, but we can factor an e to the 2ax out of the numerator and the denominator. And we're left with a squared in the numerator and a minus 1 in the denominator. Good. But now we know that f of x should be equal to the exponential of the antiderivative of this thing. So in other words, it needs to be that object right there. But that's going to give us e to the a squared over a minus 1 times x. So notice that a squared and so notice that a squared over a minus 1 is just a constant. So this is just another exponential function. Okay, so maybe let's go ahead and clean up the board and then make sure that this works as well. We just got done calculating a new dream pair of functions that is supposed to satisfy our goal quotient rule. Now we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that that works out. So we'll do that just by explicitly calculating the left hand and the right hand side of this equation. So let's start with the left hand side. So that's gonna be the quotient of f and g and then take the derivative. So notice using uh, power rules or exponent rules, the quotient of f and g will be exactly equal to e to the a squared over a minus 1 minus a times x. And then that's something we need to take the derivative of. OK, so maybe let's go ahead and make a common denominator for this stuff inside the exponent so that we can cancel it. So notice a can be rewritten as a squared minus a over a minus 1. But now we're really subtracting that from a squared over a minus 1. So this whole thing in the exponent turns into e to the a over a minus 1 times x prime. So it goes without saying here that a cannot be equal to 1 because here we would get something bad in the denominator and this wouldn't work out. So that's not a, an allowable value for a. Maybe I'll let you guys think about if there are other values of a that are not allowable. Okay, now let's go ahead and take this derivative. So again, using the chain rule, we have a times a over a minus 1 e to the a, a minus 1 x. Great, now let's go ahead and calculate the right-hand side of this equation, which is the quotient of the two derivatives. So let's see what we get for that. So the derivative of uh, the numerator over the derivative of the denominator, so we have f prime. So that's going to be a squared over a minus 1 times e to the a squared over a minus 1 times x. Good. And then the derivative of the denominator will be a um, times e to the ax. Good. But notice uh, we have this a right here. We'll scrub this down to an exponent of 1. And we're left with a over a minus 1. And then we can use exponent rules to see that we have a squared over a minus 1 minus a all times x. But we already determined that that was equal to a over a minus 1 times x. But now we can see that this matches with this, so we've constructed another pair of these dream functions. Okay, so maybe that's a good place to stop. Um, and in the comments you could post, what would the dream version of the chain rule be? 